Well, I number my films, so I think if I remember right, we show number two here, which is my first work, and that's an important work for me because that was the first work that I ever made that I liked. Now I thought, now I actually personally made something that you know I think is important, is important, and also touch people. So that became the basis for my work. And then we show my hit single, which is number eight, me walking in front of an icebreaker, which is usually, you know, there. And also we show number 14, which is my uh, personal favorite. And uh, my last film, this is a feature film. Um, seven years ago already I had a really bad accident, like a bus fractured my skull base and I was in a used coma for a month and when I came out of coma I was uh, left paralyzed, I was 53 kilos, totally uh, traumatically brain injured. So my consciousness came back little by little, so it was almost a second life. And then um, in the rehab, I was a bit down and then the doctor came to me and said, you should be happy, you should be laughing and crying, uh, laughing and dancing in the corridors because 95% of the people would have not survived this accident. So I had a bit of gorilla experience, I was like, yay me. But then also, uh, when I was thinking about my childhood, I realized that an inferiority complex saved my life because I had been overcompensating for 35 years. And this film was also a bit of a uh, middle finger uh, to the Bible Belt that I grew up with, where I you know, was a total outcast to kind of think that at least I did something good in a way. So the film is about that, like we documented uh, my rehab and there were a lot of parallels between my rehab and my first life. I had to learn how to walk, talk, play piano and everything. I mean, I love Tarkovsky, which is not exactly narrative or kind of logical in a verbal way. So it just kind of uh, mirrored my first and my second life. Rehab is not, you know, that's real in a way because you have to relearn everything and reenact in a way that's acted. So, uh, I mean, I use, it's almost like, you know, I asked actors to play my childhood, so that was fake by, you know, I mean, they were liars in a way because they were acting me and they're not me. But when I, uh, you know, in the rehab, it was me even though I knew that the camera was there, but still, you know, I tried to do, even though I realized that I'm being filmed, I still had to do other things. And in alternated scenes, like the people are just there because they're actors and I asked them to do those scenes. So in that sense, it's not completely authentic. So there's a difference between authenticity be between uh, the two things. Mm -hmm. And I swear by authenticity, I always thought that everything that happens in my movie should be authentic. It was a bit weird because all of a sudden I was a director casting myself and my family. Well, in the film, I wanted to have a couple of things that I experienced uh, acted out by the people that were actually there. And I thought, well, playing yourself can't be that difficult, but it actually is when you put people in a room where you have a camera, you know, they're not themselves anymore. But I have a lot of experience by doing this and I realized that if you bore people, if you repeat, it, repeat the same thing, then people get bored and then they're themselves. And also learned about mumble cord, you know, this term. That's kind of low budget acting, not by working actors, but just by uh, using friends, but of course then it's always, you know, has the, has the uh, atmosphere of not 
you know, being acted amazingly, but still it's somehow authentic in a sense. Well, when I was restaging the memories, um, some scenes that were, you know, tough memories that I think that also took a little bit of bit of the angle out of the memories because we had to restage them. And also, uh, I think, I don't think it's personal, but I think we always remember the good and the bad memories and, you know, some bad memories. But I think they were, worked psychologically also in my uh, favor to get this, system, this kind of bad memories out of my system. Um, Yeah, but it's uh, as a uh, you know as a director and a script writer, so I could step away from the actual memories that are not. You know, they're like that's why I call it auto fiction. They're like fictionalized memories that are not that personal anymore. So I could take a distance. So that was important. <laughs> Well, when I made the uh, when I premiered the film, I was a bit afraid, very afraid, because I thought, well, this film also drip, drips with self pity and self glorification. But it luckily managed to transcend that. Uh, anyways, I've been a uh, you know a video artist for like twenty five years, so I hopefully learned something. <laughs> and I think there are no uh, you know there are no rules. Uh, but you just try, you know, live and learn. That's, uh, I learned a lot from this experience, but now also that the movie is done, I want to take one step back and uh, make works that are not about me or my family or whatever, but just universal language. Well, I always uh, looked for a way to use text in my work and then uh, of course you can have the titles in the beginning, the title of the film, but then I sometimes also used uh, kind of uh, uh, advertisement airplane to you know have a bit of text. But then at some point when I started to write music and orchestrate music and then I realized I can actually have a choir and again, like ironically, I thought it's nice because if you have a professional classical choir, they can sing whatever the hell that you want them to sing. And then still it's, it's in the movie. So it's, uh, I also in my last movies, I sometimes they sing totally perverted things, but if it's a professional singer, so it's, you know, that's, at least it's beauty in it and irony and I think it adds layers to my work because it's not you know it's not a scene being acted out but more like a poetry sentences and doesn't need to be make sense and what we did like uh, a person that works in the uh, office of my producer had uh, this brilliant idea to make a white line and the text because nobody can understand what a choir is singing in the libretto, but she, he put it upstairs in the image, so almost like an uptitle. And I, I thought it's really nice uh, to do this. So I just use it as a poetic uh, sidelines. I think uh, for me, irony is poetry. I, I personally love, you know, it's totally my taste, but I, I think there's something beautiful.